Hello everyone, I am Shyam Pasari and welcome to ASIN Academy. Now in this video, we will solve some three basic questions on permutation and combination and all these questions will be different from each other so we will get a broader concept about this topic. So let's begin with our first question. So the first question that we have over here says that the number of ways in which you can arrange 5 physics, 6 maths and 9 chemistry books in a row and we are given that there is no restriction. So since there is no restriction, I just have to find that how many books are there. So in total, we have 5 plus 6 plus 9, which is equal to 20 books. So I can arrange 20 books in 20 factorial ways in a row. So my answer is 20 factorial. Now suppose if I put a restriction that books of same subject should be together. So let's find out that what will be the answer for this case. So we have 5 physics books, 6 maths books and 9 chemistry books. We can take the physics book as a single unit as x, maths books as a single unit as y and chemistry books as a single unit as z. Now I have three different units x, y and z and I know that I can arrange three different objects in a row in three factorial ways. Our answer is not yet complete. I can arrange the five physics books in five factorial ways, the six maths books in six factorial ways and same for the nine chemistry books, I can arrange them in nine factorial ways. So our final answer would be three factorial into five factorial into six factorial into nine factorial. So this is our final answer. Now if I confuse that why I have applied the multiplication sign between the numbers, then I have used the law of multiplication rule which says that if two events are dependent on each other, then the multiplication sign comes in between and since arranging the books of different subjects were dependent on each other, that's why we applied the law of multiplication. Now moving on to our second question, it says that how many rectangles are there in a chessboard? Now before solving this question, let me tell you what should be our approach for solving questions like these. Now a rectangle is formed by two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. So if we are given that there are m horizontal lines and n vertical lines, then the total number of rectangles that can be formed will be equal to mc2 into nc2. Now we have got this formula because out of m horizontal lines we have to choose 2 and out of n vertical lines we have to choose 2 lines and both the events are dependent on each other that's why the multiplication sign is applied. So this is how we get the formula as mc2 into nc2. Now going back to a question we have to find how many rectangles are there in a chessboard. So over here I have taken a simple image of a chessboard. So let's find that how many vertical lines are there. So if I start calculating, I will find that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And since the chessboard has same number of horizontal lines, so I can say that we have 9 horizontal and 9 vertical lines in a chessboard. So the number of rectangles in a chessboard will be 9C2 into 9C2, which is equal to 1, 2, 9, 6. So we have 1296 rectangles in a chessboard. So moving on to our third and final question, it says that how many triangles can be formed from 5 collinear points and 13 non-collinear points. So basically collinear points are those that lie on a straight line and non-collinear points are those which does not lie on a straight line. So for forming a triangle, we require three points and the only restriction that we have over here is that all the three points should not be collinear points. So for solving these kinds of question, we have a very simple formula. If there are m collinear points and n non-collinear points, then the total number of triangles that can be formed is equal to m plus n c3 minus m c3. So how did we get this formula? In the first case, we have taken total number of points and selected three points from it. In the first case, we have taken both the collinear and non-collinear points and we have taken three points from it. 
and in the second part we have removed all the cases in which we are selecting all the three points from the collinear points. So putting our values given in the question in the formula we will get 18C3 minus 5C3 which is equal to 806. So the total number of triangles that can be formed from 5 collinear and 13 non-collinear points is equal to 806. That was all for this video and I hope that you understood all the topics covered in this video and if you have any doubt then you can post your doubts down in the comment section or you can send your doubts to us to our channel's official Instagram or Facebook page and we will surely solve your doubt as soon as possible. Or you can go to the official website of ASEAN Academy and you can send your doubts to us from there and all the links are provided down in the description. And if you did like the video then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel ASEAN Academy.